Hey, today I thought we'd look at this little three-phase permanent magnet uh, servo motor. Um, this is a a bad unit that was taken off of a burn machine that um, in a business I had where I upgraded CNC equipment and things of that nature. This is one that I upgraded to this system, and the only failure that I know of on on this on the system. Uh, this was done almost ten years ago. Changed that to older DC and brush type. To this little small three-phase type now this uh this motor and drive system made by uh down hair motion the little drive or servo controller that was uh driving this servo motor was actually uh you could hook it up to 120 volt or 240 volt single phase and it would output three phase to this little permanent magnet uh servo motor so this is some of the uh information on this actual motor 8000 rpm 0.59 kw so it's just you know it ain't far from being a horsepower output of this little thing it's got quite a good bit of torque puts out 320 volts dc to it um it has the current 2.73 and the torque of 0.87 newton meters so I was always impressed when I put this system together and was on my bench just testing it with the uh, with the new control system I had feeding it. I was amazed at the torque this little uh, custom motor put out. This is a custom motor because I had to have the shaft this exact size. So. We'll show up close to the connector there. So you got your three phase and ground and then also if it had a break and then for also for the smart encoder feedback because this is a smart feedback device it's not just a the older uh units have resolvers which resolvers meaning it actually used a sine wave um different phase sine wave for positioning which was was really neat um of course encoders your digital digital pulses um i actually have an encoder out of a a larger a larger uh motor also a servo motor you can tell it's got the a b and z phases there with the colors of the wire and this would have came from inside of the motor so you wouldn't have seen these they were going to a, a connector similar to this circular connector but you can see the power coming in here more than likely But these are uh, very high precision uh, devices. Hard to really get into it because it is epoxy together. That is a Texas Instrument chip there. You can read that number. But um, these, this is actually an optical encoder. There's some that's magnetic. Um, I don't remember the specs on this one, but one thing in the part number dot matrix printed on here is it says Y2048, so it's telling me it's a 2048 pulse, so 2048 pulses per revolution, because a 1024 is also a very common in optical encoders that even uh, magnetic uh, encoders, your typical is, is 1024 or 2048. 2048 of course being a lot higher resolution but i don't know if you can see when i when i spin this i don't know if you can see that glass wheel rotating so i just thought i'd put a little black mark on there it might make it easier to see when i rotate it But you can see the uh, the emitter there and the detector circuit over here. So it's picking up the lines optically with this. I'm assuming it's like a laser emitter and then laser detector over here on this side of the circuit. 
but um, whether this will help or hurt, I don't know. But anyway, that's just a quick look at a uh, encoder that I already had off of a, a unit, which just went on the shaft and compressed down with a lock collar. This one, I'm actually not 100% sure how it is. It's gonna be something similar. set that aside because this popped off now I wasn't I was not expecting to see that let's take a closer look, closer look at this yeah it's a lot of board In case anybody was interested, I did pull the little label off of this um, little ASIC. If we can see this with the camera or not. Try to do a little bit better view with that, uh, the label off of that ASIC. It's Agtail Pro ASIC. Pro ASIC Plus. APA back of that board if I can get lined up on it here we will take a closer look That's probably your programming points for your ASIC. But that magnet is very, very strong. And, and there's the um, rotor. But that is really strong magnets that is, uh, I guess that's resin epoxy on there. But that is um, some kind of strong magnets on these things. If you ever, if you ever want some really, really strong magnets, these uh, permanent magnet, the newer type uh, servos, all the rotors, even though some of them are more difficult to take apart, the rotors do have some very strong magnets. Now, a lot of them are solid. Uh, I don't know how unusual this is. 
I think I've seen an Allen Bradley one like this as well that was a little bit larger, but uh, I think it was made like this as well. But some of the, the ones even bigger than that are solid gray, uh, but they are very strong. Yeah, I just couldn't, just couldn't show on the bench how strong it is. Gonna have to put it on something sure enough, sure enough metal there. closer look at this feedback device and we see that it actually is a resolver so the resolver as it turns get your sinusoidal output sine cosine In relation to the speed of the shaft, the signal will change. Uh, is very uh, noise immune, but I was very surprised that it used that that technology and then converted the signal coming out from the actual analog signal, if you will, coming out from the resolver fed into the the boy with the ASIC. And an analog to digital converts that signal and outputs. As you can see, it goes up to the connector. It actually outputs that signal to the actual drive or servo controller. It looks like we got power coming in from the drive and then just two wires, the yellow and blue, feeding the feedback. So very surprised to see the resolver. In this instance, I, I knew when I bought this system that it was a, a newer digital style uh, feedback device, but didn't know that it was a resolver, um, which I guess for noise immunity and heat, a lot of things, uh, I think vibration too, is very good. Also, you can see here up close the, uh, the three phases coming out of the potted winding of the stator up and going into the connector. I do want to take a closer look at the feedback device. I would love to actually hook it up to oscilloscope and look at the signal and uh, the patterns. Maybe even compare different feedback devices, optical encoders, magnetic encoders, which there would be a similar pulse, but just to to show it on an oscilloscope screen. I don't want to make this video too long, so maybe the next video I'll, uh, I have several different uh, encoders and uh, put them on an oscilloscope screen and look at the signals. That was just a quick look inside of this little three-phase permanent magnet servo motor. Uh, I'm not gonna put this unit uh, back together. It's a, uh, it was a destructive tear down. It was already uh, bad, I didn't have any plans on trying to fix it or anything like that so as long a life as i have i just i had already put a new one on that machine so thought we'd just look at it and uh see if there's anything interesting inside uh the the stator and the rotor are very common uh any of them i took apart are, are very similar one way or another the actual feedback was was very interesting to me i i learned a little from it i i had no idea that it uh it worked the way that it did. So, uh, hope you learned a little something from it.